Before I begin my presentation, commissioners, I want to address the present tragedy that the Japanese people have experienced as a result of one of the fifth largest earthquakes in the world, recorded in over a century, and the largest earthquake in Japan's history. The earthquake, tragic as it was, and notwithstanding the enormous damage it did to life and property, was not the main problem with the nuclear power plants in Japan. The power plants were designed and built in the late 1960s and improved every year since then. Because of the small land mass of the nation of Japan, nuclear power plants in that country are located in areas of known geological activity, specifically earthquakes, and they are located in highly populous areas. A 12.4 mile radius from one of the nuclear power plants involved, an estimated 200,000 people have been evacuated as a precautionary measure. When the earthquake hit, all of the nuclear reactors in the area of the quake automatically shut down. They still needed to be cooled, even though they were shut down. The quake tore down electric transmission lines that provided electricity to the cooling pumps that circulated water around the core of the reactor. Immediately, the secondary power source for the pumps, diesel electric generators, kicked in and ran the pumps for about an hour until the tsunami hit. When the tsunami hit, the water flooded the diesel generators that were providing the power for the cooling pumps, shutting them down. That is when the reactors that had already been shut down but were still hot started building up pressure inside the reactor core and the containment domes, pressure that safety valves automatically opened and closed based on programmed safety criteria, <coughs> relieving the pressure and releasing a small amount of radiation into the atmosphere. I think it's a tribute to the nuclear engineering in Japan that as of this moment, notwithstanding the earthquake and significant subsequent tremors and the tsunami, the containment domes around the nuclear reactor cores have remained intact and contained the bulk of the radiation. As we consider the future, we all need to be mindful that life is not risk-free. The experience the Japanese are having will be used by the world to build yet safer and more secure <coughs> nuclear power plants. Had the power plants in Japan been generated by coal, or oil, or gas-fired plants, the explosions and loss of property and life would have been significant. But that doesn't mean that the country should abandon, abandon energy production. A vibrant economy needs power to fuel it. Our prayers and the prayers of the world are with the Japanese people and the government as it faces the continuing challenges to overcome the challenges they face in the coming months and years. I don't think the press has helped the matters relative to what's taking place today at this hearing, in the sense of sensationalizing the problem and trying to magnify the problem, the Voice of America News.com headline was expert, nuclear radi radiation could spread far beyond Japan. The LA Times, <coughs> quote, Japan fears a nuclear disaster after reactor, reactor breach. The New York Times, Japan's crisis Japan's nuclear crisis stokes fear in Europe. Reuters, radiation leaking from Japan's quake hit nuclear. All these are headlines that have occurred in the last five days. The BBC News, huge blast at Japan, at Japan nuclear power plant. Reuters again, Japan battles crisis at quake hit nuclear power plants. The Union of Concerned Scientists, and I'll talk about them in a minute. Scientists say Japan quake shows US nuclear risks. Spiegel, a German publication online, accident triggers nuclear power debate in Germany. I'm not saying that what's happening in Japan isn't newsworthy, for surely it is. But those are the headlines, whereas most of the text deals with the problems with the tsunami, the millions of Japanese citizens who are without homes, without food, without water. Those aren't the headlines. 
None of these publications ever printed a headline that read, World's Nuclear Power Saves Three Times the U.S. Carbon Dioxide Auto Emissions in One Year. And that's a fact. But none of those headlines ever stated that. I'd like to distribute to each of you some graphics that you won't be able to see because you're going to be up here. First of all, I'd like to talk about what problems for energizing our community is. Uh, I read in the paper this morning that uh, Don Gillespie is involved in this project, and I want to assure you and the public that he isn't. Uh, I was asked by somebody in the, in the community uh, that had read the article about that, and he is not involved in my company. My company is a limited liability company with 13 members, myself, and 12 interest groups that I've created out of my imagination, out of my knowledge of the community and the needs in the community. Those interest groups are the police and sheriff departments, that's one interest group, the hospitals in Pueblo County, second interest group, CSU Pueblo and Pueblo Community College, the fire departments and districts in Pueblo County, renewable energy projects in Pueblo County, parks, recreational capital projects in Pueblo County, Petco and Action 22 is a separate interest group, School District 60 is an interest group, School District 70 is not, and I'll explain why in a moment. All the youth organizations in Pueblo County are an interest group, all cultural activities in Pueblo County is a separate interest group, all senior citizen organizations in the county is another interest group, and the Pueblo City County Health Department is yet the last interest group. If energy is developed in the Clean Energy Park by March of 2022, I'm asking the developer to pay to my company, Quadrants, for energizing our community a fraction of a cent per kilowatt hour generated. As little as one-tenth of one cent per kilowatt hour generated. I'll take the revenue from that income stream and distribute 80% of it to these 12 interest groups. Depending on the energy generated, it could be as much as a million dollars a year to those interest groups. I want you to know also that the interest groups, according to the structure I've created by myself, is they will be managed by a seven-person volunteer committee. Two of those people will be appointed by you, the county commissioners. Two by the city council of the city of Pueblo. And three by myself, by the Puebloans for energizing our community. There'll be community-based volunteers who will administer those funds. That's who Puebloans for Energizing Our Community is. I also have an informal group of people who have helped me uh, understand nuclear power better than I would have otherwise, uh, and they are interested in accomplishing the objective of bringing clean energy to Pueblo. What is the objective of this entity, Puebloans for Energizing Our Community? to educate and energize the Pueblo community to work together to bring high-paying, permanent jobs to our community and to bring a clean, safe business to our community that will generate <coughs> significant sales and property taxes for years to come, benefiting all of us in Southern Colorado, and particularly those of us in Pueblo County. Now, when I say energize the Pueblo community to work together, I mean it project of this magnitude get some lights, cannot be accomplished by one person or by my entity. It will not be accomplished unless all of us, you, our political leaders, your staffs, the staff of the city and county departments, our civic leaders, our industrial and educational leaders, our union leaders, and the majority of our citizens really want this to happen and actively take a part in welcoming a developer of energy into the community. Without this expressed attitude by our community, why would a stranger come into the community and spend five to eight billion dollars to establish an industry, train a workforce, and run a business for 60 to 80 years? How are we going to accomplish this? If this planned unit development application and the development plan are approved, 
We're going to try to persuade the developers of clean energy, including solar, wind, geothermal, biomass, and nuclear power, to build power generating plants, power storage and support facilities on 24,000 acre, acres of land that is covered by this PUD application. You generally know that this acreage is southeast in Pueblo County. It's 25 miles east of I-25, south of Grape Road. On the eastern edge of it is 58th Lane, and 58th Lane is extended south. What the land looks like is what this satellite picture is, and you don't have this. There's no irrigated acreage in this park. I don't know how many cows could survive on the park, but not too many. Uh, the land is pretty barren at this time, and I think it's an ideal use for this land. In a nutshell, I believe that uh, use of this land makes the, the most sense for it. The way I've structured the planned unit development application is that the, there would be no retail sales on this land other than the sale of energy, and there, there would be no housing on this land. And I've structured it that way to improve the value of all of the land that surrounds this land, so that that land, not this land, would improve in value as people want to live close to where they work. Now the process that I've used is a planned unit development. According to the county regulations, a planned unit, unit development is established for the following purposes among others. To encourage innovation in commercial and industrial development. To provide more flexibility and latitude of design to provide more flexibility in the review process, to address the advantages resulting from technological change, and to encourage integrated planning in order to achieve the above purposes. The PUD application and the development plan that I've submitted accomplishes these purposes in accordance with the county regulations. The hearing before the Public County Planning Commission and this hearing before the Public County Commissioners allows the public the opportunity to be heard as provided by the county rules and regulations. And in addition to the notices of these meetings, shortly after I conceptualized this project, I prepared a PowerPoint presentation that I presented to numerous people in the community, including members of the Sierra Club, and they asked if they could distribute it to their constituents, and I willingly said yes, because I wanted everybody to know what was going on so there could be no surprises. Additionally, sometime last year, there was a significant newspaper article about the project, and I communicated details of the proposal on a local radio station. I've made numerous presentations to public groups who invited me to do so. And I'm mentioning this only because at the Planning Commission hearing, there were screams and cries that we didn't know about this. How could this happen? How could you make these decisions in such a hurry? And I want you to know, I don't think it's being made in a hurry. The information I'm going to share with you uh, came from my independent research of a number of sources. A little background on myself. You all know I practice law. I've been here in Pueblo for 38 years. I'm an electrical engineer from Purdue University. Uh, I've worked for Hewlett Packard in electrical engineering before I went back to law school. I mention that only to point out that I have a technical background that allows me to try to understand technical matters, and that's what I've tried to do. Some of the information I'm going to communicate to you I got from the Department of Energy website, some from the Nuclear Regulatory Commission website, some from the Nuclear Energy Institute, the Clean and Safe Energy Coalition website, the Electric Power Research Institute, the American Nuclear Society, the U.S. Waste Technical Review Board report of December of last year. A book, Power to Save the World, by Gwyneth Cravens. Another book by William Tucker, Terrestrial Energy. The Environmental Protection Agency website. The National Academy of Sciences website. The U.S. Energy Information Administration. And the Union of Concerned Scientists website. I'll mention to you right now that that, that organization, the Union of Concerned Scientists, is basically group of individuals that are opposed to nuclear energy. 